Today, we play in an underground 1-3 poker game at a secret location in Missouri. I'm facing crazy players who will play any two cards. We have huge all-ins, massive bomb pots, and all this happens with my mortgage on the line. Buying in for $500 and we pick up pocket kings in the first hand. With these pocket kings, we're in middle position, so we're going to go ahead and raise it up here once the action gets to us. We see some limpers. We're going to bump it up to $20 to go. And unfortunately, we don't get 3-bet here. That's obviously the dream, but that's not what happens. We see several callers. There's going to be a bunch of people in here, so we end up going four ways to the flop, which is a pretty decent one for us. It's 9-3-3. Three, three. I guess we'd prefer it wasn't a paired board, but you wouldn't think threes would be that big of a concern. Eventually, we see the action check to us. We're going to go ahead and bet out here, try and get some value against whatever these people could possibly have. I lead out for $40 here, and we see the action start to fold around the table. Eventually, it gets back to a player that we have played with only one time before. He decides he's going to bump it up. He's going to check raise us here. He's raising it to $140 to go, leaving himself about $135 behind. Not really very happy with this situation. Obviously a limp caller here could have a three, but we've got pocket kings. I don't think we can be too afraid of this action. We're gonna go ahead and rip it in here. We get some really bad news when he snap calls and shows us the three deuce of hearts. Pretty freaking lame guys. Feel like we played this pretty poorly. Actually, I think we can maybe even fold kings here against this particular player. I don't really know if that's true, but I don't think he's gonna be bluffing with any sort of draw here. We lose a big one, no miracle on the turn, no miracle on the river. We are off to a very bad start. We have dug ourselves a deep hole, we're stuck. Let's get into this session. Let's hope we can turn things around. We're gonna really need to because that is not the way you wanna start things off. Shortly after that nightmare of Pocket Kings, we're looking down at Jack-6 offsuit from the big blind. Kenny, how are you gonna have this hand be in your vlog? Well. It ends up getting kind of interesting because we check our option and we go three ways to a flop, which comes down jack high. So we're gonna go ahead and bet out here. We bet $5 after the small blind checks to us and we see folds except for the small blind who makes the call. So we're off to see a turn, which is a pretty good card for us. The turn is another jack. So when he checks, we're gonna bet out again. I bet $15 and he pretty quickly without thinking about it makes the call. So I think we're in a pretty good spot right here. When the river comes down a seven, he checks once again. How much value can we get here out of our jacks? We're gonna go ahead and bet out $40, hoping we can get a call. Surely we can get some sort of crying call. What's he been calling with this whole time? Eventually, he thinks about it for a little bit and puts in the call. So we show our jack. He claims to have had 9-3 for a flopped two pair. I don't think that really makes a ton of sense as I figure he would have raised us, but we take down a decent pot and we got some value on the river. So a little bit of healing here. Let's keep things going. Looking down at King-10 of Diamonds from the small blind in this one, we see a player in the hijack make it $15. We make the call, and we are off to see a flop. Obviously not the flop of our dreams. I check, and he checks also, so that works out pretty great. We're going to get to see a free turn card, and it's a good one for us. It's the Ace of Diamonds giving us the nut flush draw, so pretty excited about that. He bets $15 here. I wanted to raise, but since that card is so much better for him than it is for me, I kind of chicken out or more like I decide that it's not as good of an idea. So eventually here, I just go ahead and put in the call. So we're off to see a river, really hoping that it can be a diamond or something we can try and bluff on here. Unfortunately, it's the two of clubs. So I'm going to check and he snap checks it back and shows his pocket seven. So that's pretty annoying. My bluff definitely would have worked. We screwed ourselves over though. We should have gone after this one on the turn, but obviously an ace is gonna be a so much better card for him. So I don't think that's a huge mistake, but in hindsight, it obviously would have worked if we would have bet there. So, oh well, on to the next one. Getting into our first bomb pot, we're looking down at not that great of a hand, but when we see these two boards, suddenly we've got almost the nuts on one board. So we're feeling pretty good about that. We don't have very much in front of us. So I end up re-raising all in on the flop after someone potted it. So I'm all in for around $220. We see the turns and the rivers that don't change a whole lot for me as I'm still holding almost the nuts on one board and very little on the other. It turns out our flopped full house is gonna hold up. We're gonna drag in half of this pretty sizable pot to get our stack up to a little over 400. We're rebuilding after that debacle with pocket kings. So I don't usually include these bomb pot hands, but this is a pretty pivotal one. We take down a big chunk. Time to rebuild. Looking down at pocket jacks this time from middle position, I've got around $400 in front of me. We see the player from the pocket sevens hand make it $15 to go. A very loose player makes the call also. And then the action's on us. We obviously have a decision 
here. We've got a middle of the road pocket pair. I think it's time to bump it up in a big way. So we decide to go ahead and put out $100 here. I think that's a pretty decent size in this spot and we're expecting to get some calls and we are not disappointed. We see one player fold and then we see the loose player make the call here. So hoping that we can find a favorable flop that doesn't have a bunch of overcards on it. That's really all you can hope for when you've got pocket jacks. And against this player, he could be calling with a pretty wide range, but not that wide of a range. And that's not the flop that we get, guys. The flop is ace, king, three. So when my opponent, who is one of those loose passive players, shoves all in for about $300 effective, time for us to go ahead and make the fold here. And he shows us ace king for top two pair. So we lose that one. Pretty nice flop for him. Oh well, played it right, on to the next one. We've been whiffing everything for the last little while. We've bricked a couple of pocket pairs. We've bricked a couple of very nice suited connectors. We're down to around 250 bucks in front of us and we're in the big blind when we look down at ace, queen, offsuit. We see a very tilted player from the cutoff open up to $15. We see the button player who calls all the time make the call. We're gonna raise it up to $100 and the action folds back to the tilted original raiser who thinks about it for a second before eventually deciding he's gonna go ahead and play for it all. He's putting it all in for around 150 bucks. We see the loose player make the fold which is really nice for us we're making the call here guys and we are off to see a run out we need to win this one it could be a flip we could be in really good shape he doesn't seem very happy when we flip over our hand flop comes down king high which is not good for us turn is a queen so that's beautiful and the river is a seven he mucks his hand not really sure what he had here but we're gonna go ahead and take this one down some much needed chips we are healing up a little bit we can still turn this into a winning session. Let's get after it. Let's find a way to pick up some hands and hit some flops. Going from one big all-in hand to another, we're looking down at pocket tens in the cutoff this time. We see a young, pretty aggressive player open to $10 from under the gun, and there are like three callers before the action finally gets to me. Obviously, with a good pocket pair here, we're gonna raise it up. I decide we're gonna go ahead and go with the sizing of $60 here. I think I could actually go bigger. I think I could go like 75 maybe. And the action, action eventually folds over to the under the gun player, the original Razor, when we get some interesting news from him. He's under the gun, so he could have a pretty solid range here, but he's an active player. He raises it up for around $150 total. This is an interesting spot for me. I'm facing a pretty big bet here. I don't have that much behind. And this is a player that has felt like he comes after me a little bit. He thinks I'm a tighter player, I'm pretty sure. We decide, after thinking about it for a little bit, I don't really think he's gonna have that strong of a range. I think he's gonna have something like Ace King at kind of the best. The nightmare here is that we run into Jacks, but I don't think that's too likely. After thinking about it for a little bit, we finally decide we're gonna go ahead and rip it all in here. We are all in for around $380 total. He goes into the tank for a little bit, thinking about it. He asks how much we have, we tell him. Eventually he decides to make the call. I ask him we can run it twice. He eventually agrees. We don't get to see what his hand is, so we are off to see a flop. First board, the flop is not a good one for us. Obviously a terrible one for us, but the river bails us out. The river is the 10. So now we've got three of a kind. So as long as he doesn't have a queen, we're in good shape. The next flop comes down nine high with two clubs. Seems good for us, but the turn is another club. So that's not great. And the river is a deuce. And our opponent shows down ace nine of clubs. Yeah, pretty crazy. Would not expect him to be making the call with that hand here. Um, yeah, really sucks to only win half of this pot, but it could have been worse. We could have lost on both boards, so oh well. We chopped this one up. Could have been a big spot for us, but oh well. Sometimes you run a little bit bad. On to the next one. Looking down at pocket sevens in this one, I'm under the gun one. I decided to open up to 15 bucks, and we go like five ways to a flop of Jack Jack 6. Yeah. If it was Jack-Jack-7, we're in business, but it's Jack-Jack-6, so we are very much not in business. The action ends up checking over to a player across the table who's on the button, and he decides he's going to go ahead and bet. He's going to bet out $40. I don't really know if I believe him here. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Obviously, it's hard for somebody to have a Jack, but with this many players in the hand, you could definitely see somebody having a Jack here. I decide after we see a very calling station type player make the call, but there's enough in there. We're gonna go ahead and make the call also. We're gonna see if we can peel off 
a seven, or if we can maybe have the best hand here. Obviously, I think there's a, some chance. I'm not very worried about the caller. He's a very loose player. He could be calling with really any two here. He could have a flush draw, potentially. That would make a lot of sense. That's also what we think the button razor could have also so we're off to see a turn which comes down the six of spades so now the board is double paired when the action checks to the button he bets out a hundred and ten dollars now i think my mistake on this hand was on the flop i think i could have potentially check raised against the button player just based on how he sometimes tends to play his draws and hands like that obviously he's gonna have a jack here a lot of the time though so i don't know if that's a very good play we see a fold from the calling station and a fold from us the player on the button is nice enough to show us a six so he ended up with a full house but not the best full house obviously no idea why i didn't check raise that flop i'm gonna have lots of jacks there so i think that could have been a potential spot for me but oh well can't win them all looking down at a7 of hearts in this one we're in the big blind i see a late position open to 15 dollars. we're gonna go ahead and call we're gonna see a flop and we go four ways to the flop yep everything's going very multi-way off to a flop which comes down queen high with a seven and one heart i'm gonna check and eventually we see the action check all the way around which is a little bit surprising but hey we're not too upset about it turn comes down the seven of diamonds we're gonna check again here and we see the action check all the way around now what we were hoping for off to see a river which comes in five of diamonds i'm gonna check again i know i've got trips with a great kicker but we're checking we're setting the trap we see a player bet twenty dollars time to go ahead and spring this trap we're raising it up here we're gonna make it 65 dollars to go i think that's a pretty decent size i'm not really sure what i'm gonna get called by here except for a seven with a worse kicker but maybe that's just what we can go ahead and target here and we get snap called my opponent mucks his hand right away when i show mine so we go ahead and take it down with trips maybe we could have made more here but i think that would have been tough we might have just been getting money from a queen there so yeah stacking up a little bit of profit on to the next hand in the next one, we're looking down at a very pretty suited connector. We're gonna go ahead and make the call when we see a middle position open to $20. Uh, this player has been opening a ton of hands, which is very unusual for him. He's more of a loose passive type player, but we've got a great suited connector here, so we're gonna try and see a flop. Maybe we can connect a little bit, and maybe we can play a big pot against someone who's very sticky. End up going like five ways to a flop, so that's not exactly ideal, but we've got a very good hand. Unfortunately, that hand does not connect with this board. We see one diamond, but that's all we get. Action checks through, and we see the turn come down the ace of hearts. When it checks through again, none of this really matters. The moral of the story here is we've had a ton of these nice pseudo-connected hands, and we cannot hit anything. We can't get a piece of anything, so we're going to be check-folding our way out of this hand. It just hasn't been the kind of night where we're going to hit a lot of hands. Looking down at Jack Nine of Diamonds in this one, we're in middle position. We see that same player from the hand before open up to $20. Again, we're going to go ahead and make the call. And again, we're going to go very multi-way to a flop. Not the flop we were thinking of, guys. Eight high. That's not going to do it. We're seeing no diamonds on this flop. I guess I'm being punished for playing too many hands against this one particular player. But my God, I can't even flop a draw here. My opponent bets out $50, I'm going to go ahead and fold, and he ends up taking it down. He's winning a lot of hands without showdown in this game. He's playing great, so oh well, maybe one of these days we'll flop something. Looking down at Ace, King, and Diamonds in this one, we're in middle position. I'm going to raise it up here to $25 after we see some limpers. We're very much expecting to get action with this hand, and sure enough, we do get some action. We get called here by both the under-the-gun one player and the same player who's been playing all these hands. So let's connect with a flop. Let's print some value. That's what we're hoping for here. And first three cards are looking pretty good for us. We see an Ace high flop, so that is fantastic news. Unfortunately, we see checks to us. Obviously, that's what we should expect, but against these players, you kind of have to expect the unexpected. They could do something weird, but since they don't, we're going to have to do our own betting. We bet out $65, definitely expecting to see some calls here. But unfortunately, from the very loose player, we see a pretty quick fold. And then from the other player, the player who we're looking for revenge for the three deuce hand, he goes into the tank. He's thinking about it, thinking about it, can't really decide what to do apparently before he eventually decides he's going to put in the fold a pretty annoying result here especially if his statement that he had an ace is true if he had an ace and a bad kicker and he managed to find the fold button here that's pretty annoying good for him though oh well we're just gonna stack these chips up really wish we could have played a big pot with ace king here but wasn't in the cards apparently 
After that ace-king hand, we go super card dead for quite a while. I want to say we haven't played a hand in a half hour or 45 minutes. We just can't get a single thing before we finally look down at a playable hand. We've got 8-7 of diamonds in this one. I decided we're going to call 15 bucks preflop. It's from that player who's been opening up every single hand. Every single time it feels like this guy opens up, there are several callers, and we go multiple ways to a flop, which is exactly what happens in this one. Surely we can flop something here, guys, right? Surely, we've got another premium suited connected hand. Yeah, we do not flop anything. The flop comes down 10, queen, deuce, with only one diamond. We see a bet. Really nothing we can do here. We're gonna be making another fold. Pretty annoying though. Surely one of these times we have to hit something with our suited connectors. But when we see our opponent put out $25, all we can do here is fold. Buckle up guys, time for another bomb pot. We look down at a pretty decent hand and when we see these two boards come out, we know we're in action. There's some insane play in this hand. All my money eventually ends up going in on the turn when I have the nuts on board one. So on board one, we have the absolute best hand possible. So we're in pretty good shape. There's some weird action with four total players involved. I and another player have pretty small stacks compared to the other two. In the end, even though the board pairs, my straight ends up being good on board number one, and we end up taking down a half of a huge pot, which gets us up to around 750 bucks. I thought there was no way my hand was gonna be any good at all when the board paired up there, but we had the nuts when the money went in the middle, so we can't feel too bad about that, and we even had a redraw to the flush, so we had lots of possibilities, lots of outs, and thank God, all of our card death playing Hold'em has worked out in these bomb pots where we've actually managed to make the majority of our profit in this session. We're finally in the winning column. Let's see if we can make some other hands, some real Texas Hold'em hands, and keep this thing going. Looking down at pocket fours in this one, we've been super card dead ever since that bomb pot, but we're gonna go ahead and raise it up to $20. There have been a bunch of limpers and our table image should be pretty good. So we go ahead and bump it up, 20 bucks, end up going a staggering six ways to the flop, guys. Six ways. Can we find a four? That'd be pretty freaking great. Imagine flopping a set this multi-way. Unfortunately, that is not what happens. We are looking at a flop of King Jack Deuce. We eventually see a bet here. I don't think there's too much we can do this multi-way. We go ahead and muck our hand. We are not gonna flop any sets tonight, apparently. But oh well, at least we're still in the profit. Looking down at four three of clubs in this one, feels like a premium at this point. We've been so card dead. We see an early position player make it $15 to go. I call and we go five ways to the flop. Going very multi-way to every flop. This is your typical live game poker here, but it's a pretty good flop for us, for our hand at least. It's king, queen, deuce with two clubs. We see the initial raiser bet $15. I'm bumping it up here. I don't really believe this guy. I don't know what he's gonna have here, but I'm raising. And I should have a great image because I haven't been playing any hands tonight, it doesn't feel like. I make it $70 to go, and we see some players go into the tank. And by some players, I mean primarily this initial raiser. He's thinking about it for quite a bit here. Can't really decide what to do, but eventually we see him make the fold. We're gonna go ahead and take this one down on a flush draw alone. Feels nice to win a hand with four high, but man, all this card death, Guys, we are gonna go ahead. We're in the profit still. We've got a nice little chunk in front of us. Doesn't seem like this is gonna be the kind of night where we're gonna run it up huge, so we're gonna go home. It's pretty late. Cashing out a profit. Let's get out of here. Well guys, that's all I got for this session. In for $500, out for $740. Thanks for watching. If you stuck around for this long, leave a comment below. It helps out the algorithm. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. That helps the algorithm a ton. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new style of intro that I've been working on. Felt good to get a win. Felt like it could have been a bigger win. We were pretty card dead in this session in general, and we had a couple big all-in hands not exactly go our way. When you start off a session stuck like that and you end up getting a win though, it feels pretty great. See you guys on Tuesday. Comment below, subscribe if you're new. See you in the next one.